What's up, YouTube? Uh, welcome to this week's video in which I am going to make some carnage appendages, such as a neck and an axe hand, and I'm also going to be making a left hand with claws in this video. So, if you are curious to see how this continues, please stick around, and let's go ahead and just jump right into the build. So, the first thing I'm going to do for the left hand here is I've taken a glove, and I stuffed it full of spare grocery bags. And this is the left glove. The way I'm going to do this cosplay, I'm going to have a left hand. And the right hand isn't going to be a glove. It's actually going to be a axe appendage that I will be wielding. Which will have a handle inside I can grip. That will be in this video as well. And the idea behind that is, if I want to, and I'm at a convention, I can put it between my legs or sit it down or whatever and just take my hand out of it and have one free hand to do something and if I need be to pull off this left glove. <clears throat> and now that it's stuffed, I've taken a mixture of liquid latex and some Kratex transparent red and I've mixed it up into a container here and I'm going to begin layering the latex onto the glove itself. I'm going to start with the top side and then I'm going to work my way to the bottom and I'm going to let it fully dry. And I'm using a sponge brush here and I'm just going to start dabbing it on pretty thick. The first layer or so that I'm going to put on here is just going to be to absorb it in. Now you may notice that this is pink and if you haven't watched my Carnage upper body video I do the same technique in this. The latex dries clear, so the red shows through, and as you build up layer after layer, eventually the whole thing will look a nice brilliant red. But, until the latex dries clear, showing that red, it just looks like Bazooka Joe pink bubblegum ugliness. And, like I say, the initial layer is just to seal and cover the surface, and after that, as I start to add and layer up the latex, I will begin to use an actual brush and put brush strokes into it. Once the latex is starting to get just a little bit set, it usually takes about 5-10 minutes, and once that happens, I will put brush, brush strokes in it, and that will begin to add the texture. But for now, I just need to seal it. Alright, so I've let this dry for about 30 minutes, and now I'm going to use a regular old household hair dryer on high to help speed up this process. Okay, now you see that the pink has, except for in, like in the areas in the center here, you can see it's not quite dry. You see a little bit of pink in there, but and also in there you see a little bit of pink. But in the actual dry areas, you'll notice it is quite red, and that'll start to tell you that it is dry. You want to make sure that it's fully dry before you apply another coat. And you also want to make sure that you keep your fingers separated and that they don't touch. Uh, well, sometimes it's going to happen anyways. It's just kind of unavoidable, but try as best as you can to not let the fingers touch. Uh, reason being that <clears throat> the latex will stick to itself. And if you watch the Carnage video, you'll know that it, notice that at the end I had to coat it with a clear polyurethane coating. I'm going to do the same thing with this whenever it's done. And... Once I get this fully dry and put a second coat on, and I feel pretty confident with it, I'm going to flip it over and do the underside. So I have about four coats on this, and you'll notice it's not really enough to obscure the fact that it's a glove or to really add, you know, any real texture, but just enough to seal everything. And next I've taken my claw pattern pieces, 
And I'm going to start gluing them onto the ends of the fingers. Bam. Four. I'm not actually going to do one on the thumb. I considered it, but I have decided against it. So yeah, just on the four fingers. Okay, so here it is so far with the claws glued on that I cut out of the 5mm craft foam. And to glue these on, I used contact cement, and there's a brush applicator inside. And you brush some on each side of the surface to be bonded. You let the pieces set separately for 15 minutes, and then you simply attach them together. Now this stuff is very caustic. I usually wear a respirator while using it. And I'm generally in a well-vented area, such as right now I am out in my garage with the door open. So, keep that in mind, and always read and follow any and all safety labels. Next, I'm going to start applying, that's right, you guessed it, more layers of latex on top of the glove and the claws themselves, kind of helping to merge and bring everything together. Okay, so I think this is of, of note to point out and of worth that I've been... I've, I've just put my first layer of latex on since I glued these on. Now I put it real thick right around the fingers, as you'll notice, and right where they join because I want this to be a nice strong bond, so I'm going to build up a fair amount of latex there. But you'll notice it's pretty sporadic and spotty on the claws, for example, and there's more of it towards the rear than there is towards the tip and that's because I would like the tips to be darker. I want them to still be somewhat red but I'd like them to be darker. So as I layer this latex on I'm going to start with the back and put it more thickly there so whenever it dries clear it'll be more red there and less in the front. And as far as the hands go I'm just kind of sporadically brushing it over to create varied uh, color and to create texture as well. Alright so next I took my front axe hand uh, A and B patterns and put them together and my rear and I cut out two of the front out of five millimeter EVA craft foam and two of the rear and I just applied some contact cement to them. I'm going to go ahead and put them together. I decided to go with a five just so it was a little lighter. Uh, if you want something more sturdy though I would suggest going with some half inch foam or maybe some 5 sixteenths, but if you get it with the texture it'll be a little rough. Uh, if you're in the States you could always order something in between uh, in, a, in, a, in a millimeter size like 7 millimeter or 8 millimeter from TNT Cosplay Supply. Alright I took a half inch uh, P, uh, CPVC pipe and cut it just enough that my hand fits on it and I'll have enough room for the piece that's going to cover my hand and I glued that on using some super glue and then I reinforced this with some hot glue so it would stay in place. Next I'm going to measure out a couple strips of three millimeter foam. You could use either three or two and I'm going to shred up the ends of them and heat them and mess them up real crazy and then glue that over on both sides to help cover this and hold everything in place. Okay so this is what it looks like before I heat it. I just like I said cut a piece as wide as the actual uh, midsection here and then I just took the ends and angled them down a little bit and then just start cutting them really ragged and random and then I heat them and when I heat them they're all wrinkly and crazy looking and I've been using super glue instead of contact cement I just kind of overlap them and push them around so it's all lumpy and bumpy and kind of gross and of course you know I'm gonna put latex on this just like I have been with the glove and this should look pretty cool and should match up pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and heat this one with my heat gun on the end and get it nice and wrinkled just like this. I'm going to glue it to the other side. All right, next I took some 2 millimeter EVA craft foam. This will focus. Okay, yeah, yeah. 2 millimeter craft foam. It's quite thin. Normally I don't use it for things like this, but since this is going to be covered, and so much latex, I actually need and want it uh, flexible. I'm going to put the seam here on the back, and it's going to cover my hand while I am holding this. Uh, it is also going to be attached to the upper part of the axe. I'm going to go ahead and freehand that and come back and show you how I did it. Now, you just need to measure this long enough 
that is going to cover your hand whenever you're holding it. You're going to need some space between here and here so that you can join the two together. And also, the other thing that you're going to need is to figure out just how big a round this has to be. If you need somebody to help you once you figure out the width, you can hold it by the handle and have somebody wrap this around your hand and mark you know where it is and I would say get it tight enough that it's you know kinda of snug but not too tight uh, that it's gonna rip or tear or screw up your latex so these are the two pieces that I've come up with that are gonna go on either side and you'll notice that there's already contact cement on both of them and on this top edge and how I came up with this was I held the axe part of my axe hand positioned uh, inside here in the center at the height that I wanted it and whilst having a friend hold it for me I took my piece of two millimeter EVA foam and I just kind of angled it and curved it around to follow the shape of this I used a sharpie to trace that curve and that curve is the bottom corresponding curve here so that whenever I contact cement these two together, it will be angled. I'll let this contact cement set, glue these on, come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've taken my cuff and I glued my pieces on. And you'll notice they look radically different because I had to change and angle this top shape in order to get it to match up right. I did this by simply pinching it together while having the CPVC pipe inside and then just kind of drawing where it seemed to match up and now I've applied some contact cement uh, from the bottom here on the inside of these right up to about here I'm not going to glue the top together because I need to have that as a whole so I can position in and glue in my axe to it okay so I got the sides contact cemented together however I have not actually glued this on yet because first, I'm going to fire up my Dremel, and I'm going to start to sand a nice angle into this edge. Okay, I've got an angled edge on both sides that I'm pretty happy with. So, next I'm going to start cutting some lines into this with my X Acto knife, just like I did on the Carnage bodysuit. I'm going to bring off the blade and so forth, too. Then I'm going to use a heat gun and heat this up so that they open up and expand. I put all my cuts in it with my X Acto knife, and I even scored up this edge a bunch. Now I have my heat gun. I'm going to go ahead and get this hot. And once you get it hot, all these cuts, as you notice, have opened up and gotten much more wider and much more defined, as opposed to the original ones that are quite thin. And as you'll notice, this did curve a little bit, but that's just because the heat causes the pores to shrink. But when I heat this other side, it should even up and flatten out. Okay, so I have attached this with super glue. I also ran some super glue around the seams just to make sure it would stay in place. And I put a fair amount of it. Uh, I also, if I can get this in the light enough, you see all that white stuff in there is hot glue. That was to help reinforce it. Because this is just two millimeter foam. Uh, I just want it tough enough that it stays in place there and doesn't come off. I don't want to put too much stress on the latex as an adhesive. So I feel like I put sufficient amount. And now I'm going to go ahead and put some plastic dip on this. And the plastic dip will help seal it in. I'm just going to use black because, of course, the project is black. But the black plastic dip will help 
the foam not to absorb so much latex. The latex is quite frankly a lot more expensive and messy than the Plastidip is. Now that the Plastidip has dried, I'm going right back to my red tinted latex mixture. And much like with the gloves, I'm just going to start brushing it on. First initial layer is going to be more or less uniform, but as I go from the edge here back, there's going to be less and less and less as far as the coats. I'm not going to go so close to the edge. I'm just going to keep it more to here, and then I'm going to concentrate more in the center. So it'll be brighter red here and darker as it goes out, if that makes any sense. Just kind of like I did with the claws and the glove. That is, of course, just my own choice. You can do whatever you want, however you want with yours. But, yeah. And, of course, I'm going to try to keep that same texture. And in between all this stuff, all this craziness here, I'm going to really glob in the latex. I want to make sure it gets down in there nice and good. It'll, of course, take much longer to dry and cure in there, but eh, it'll look pretty good. Hopefully. Keep my fingers crossed. Keep my fingers crossed. But yeah. And then, once I can get all this fun stuff done, because I am going to layer this and layer this and layer this, just like I did with... Uh, the gloves so that I have a nice, or the bodysuit if you watch that video, so I get a nice consistent look with those pieces as well. And I'll put on a few coats and we'll come back and see how this looks and how the gloves look. Okay, so I have finished applying latex to one side of this, and you'll notice that it is now laying on foam. And if you're wondering why, that is because latex just sticks to everything until you feel it, but it is much easier to peel off of the foam than it is to try to peel off of something like cardboard, which is paper and much more absorbent, and the latex will really, really stick to it. The worst generally that happens whenever I put it on the foil and I peel it off is it makes the latex a little dull looking, which doesn't matter because I'm going to cover it with the clear polyurethane flex seal and it's going to look amazing. But yes, as you can see here, I did one side of this and then I just flipped it over and laid it flat and I'm going to do the other side. Initially I thought about hanging it up but eh, it's going to be swinging and swaying and whatever and I don't want that. Okay so applying my first layer to the opposite side that I have not so or sorry I've not latexed yet on the foil I want to point out that if I were doing this and I happened to run or blurb or spill a lot that would connect with this to the foil I would immediately remove it from the foil wipe that area up, wipe off the excess from the other side, and replace the foil. Like, yes, it does peel off easily from foil, but if I were to get, like, a drip here, and I let it dry, sure, it'd peel off, but then I'd have a blob sticking up off my axe hand. So just because I'm using foil doesn't mean that I still don't have to be careful, like I do, and maybe it's overkill to film and go into things like this, and some people complain about it, but this is the stuff, if you're doing stuff like this at home, whether it's a carnage hand or something similar, you're going to need to know this stuff to have a nice, clean-looking project. When you're using liquid latex, obviously, you want it to look a little messy, a little gnarly, a little crazy, a little out there, which is why I don't use, I haven't used this stuff in any project, really, except for the Necronomicon X Mortis from Evil Dead, Carnage, and Venom. Those are the only ones I've used it for that I can think of offhand, and that's the reason why. Not to mention, you can't just go out and get it like Plastidip and everything, but... For something like Carnage or Venom, you definitely need something like this. Silicone, latex, a mixture of the two, uh, something. Right, so as I was applying a layer of latex to this, or actually I was about to, I hadn't even got to, I ended up knocking over my latex and spilling it everywhere. And I was quite distraught because I literally just filled this whole thing up and mixed the color in and was kind of freaking out. Then I realized that I'm not super particular, so I took the sponge brush and a little bit at a time soaked it back up and put the majority of it back in and then wiped it up. Nice thing about a liquid like that, you can just absorb it up and put it right back before it dries. Okay, so now that the final layers of latex are drying up on this, 
I'm going to start to busy myself with the neck. And for this, if you picked up the patterns from Etsy, it comes in two parts. And you have to join them in the center here. It's marked to show where the top part where your jaw is and the bottom. And of course, these ends here are where you put your Velcro. Now, to get a general idea whether this will fit you or not, uh, two things you can do. One, just wrap the paper pattern around your neck. That's not the best way, though, because the foam is flexible. But if you want to try and find out before the foam, you can take a sewing measuring tape, measure the uh, length around your neck, and then lay it down and measure this. But I wouldn't trim it or adjust it yet if you're going to heat foam it or heat form it like I am with a heat gun. And some of the things I'm going to do are heat it and kind of pull in an Adam's apple right in the center here. I'm going to put some muscle things in different so on and so forth and such that I'm going to put into it and I'm using black foam so I sat it down some foil. That way it shows up with the, all the dark crap I have in the background of my work area here for me spilling stuff everywhere. Now I'm using two millimeter EVA foam and it does uh, heat up pretty quick and it does also so there I've already started pulling Adam's apple in I'm going to continue to work like this shape and I'm going to continue to put uh, muscle shapes in which I'll probably use a pair of scissors or something once I heat like an area here to kind of pull in like some neck muscles and things I'm going to do this stuff off camera and then we'll come check back in but yeah I'm using two two millimeter EVA foam so it does heat rather quickly uh, and it is pretty flimsy but much like this piece here I'm going to cover it with so much latex that it's not going to matter. Okay so once I got my Adam's apple shape in here I had the problem that as I was trying to heat and stretch the shape in to this top and bottom here in the front so that it would adequately fit up to my jaw and curve down to where the bodysuit and my chest are. I had the issue of this Adam's apple wanting to come out. So what I did was I took some low temp hot glue and put it in there uh, and then threw this in my freezer just to get the hot glue to cool very quickly so I didn't lose my circular shape here of the Adam's apple. Then I went back through and heated this edge and curved it and stretched it so that it has this nice shape. And now I'm going to repeat this similar process where I go in and pull in some tendons and muscles and stuff into this. And once I do that, I'm going to reinforce it the same way with the hot glue. Okay, so here it is after I have put my definition into it. And I actually did one thin layer, stuck that in the fridge, pulled it out. Sorry, freezer, pulled it out, and then did a second layer just to make sure that it held this shape as much as possible and didn't totally pull flat. Then I just used some painter's masking tape to hold it together. Because next, you guessed it, just like with the other pieces, I am going to be applying liquid latex over this whole thing, uh, doing brush strokes up and down to get texture, just like I did on the bodysuit or the axe or the hands. Okay, so now that the neck piece has significant coats of latex, I'm happy with the texture and the color and the way that it looks. I've already went and applied puffy paint to the glove here and I'm now allowing it to dry and I just picked this up at uh, Hobby Lobby. You can find this at a lot of places, Walmart, wherever. I always make sure to shake it up fully first. And the same as with the Carnage bodysuit or mask. If you watched that video, I just start to apply it here in a very kind of crazed and chaotic fashion. Now we'll do this all over the entire piece. I end up concentrating it at certain areas like these points here for example where you have a lot of stuff going on. Have it kind of coming back here from the arm. And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do all these up, including the neck piece. One thing that's kind of unfortunate about this is much like with the latexing process, I'm going to have to do one side, let it dry, and then flip it over and, of course, do the other side. All right, now that the pieces have had plenty of time for everything to be 100% dry, I'm going to start using some Flex Seal. 
and a sponge brush. And if you've seen the other videos, you'll know what this is, or if you've used it before, but it is a Class A polyurethane sealant. I got this in clear. It comes in clear, black, white, different uh, colors, but of course I want the clear to seal this in. And if you've seen my Carnage Mask or Carnage Upper Body video, I used it in that as well. I'm simply going to use this to put an even layer over everything. I'll allow it to dry for about 36 hours, and then... Uh, at that point, it'll be ready to handle and wear, and I can start trying all this stuff on with the rest of the costume. All right, so I got lucky and found a cardboard tube that just so happened to fit inside of the axe here. And I don't know if I've mentioned this in other videos. Perhaps you know this, perhaps not. This stuff is pretty much self-leveling. So if you have texture and things like that, it's not going to show up. However, the colors created by the layered textures do show up quite well. And the other point of that is that whenever you apply this stuff, you just want an even layer. You want to make sure it's spread out evenly. If not, it can uh, run and drip just like anything else. And I actually had one on one of the talons on the hand. It kind of came off. It was kind of just hanging off the end of a point like this on one of the claws, and I had to trim it off. No such issues on this yet. However, even that's pretty much a minor issue. And man, I just love this glossy sheen. Okay, so yeah, just got to wait uh, about 24 more hours and I will be able to try all this on. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Uh, now that I have some of the appendages done, I'm going to go ahead and start on the legs next. So I'll look for that in the next video. Uh, I have been taking some time off work lately to hopefully pump out some more videos and get some more great content for you guys. I just finished working a 70-hour, 7-day stretch in between trying to finish the upper body armor and all this stuff and I managed to get it done. However, things like the, you know, the upper piece did take a lot longer than usual to get a video out. I wasn't able to get my usual Saturday upload, but I was able to get it up by Halloween. And of course, back on the Saturday schedule again with this video. And I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers and to all of you that help support this on Etsy. Uh, and to all the people that just comment and like on the videos, this wouldn't be possible without you all. So I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And thank you to all the new and past subscribers. And if you enjoyed this video and you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe. It does help out the channel a lot. And as always, cosplay on and have a great day.